So why doesn't lambda f follow the behavior of bracket? Let's try to understand by means of two examples. And our first example is very simple, right? It only has three terms. The first term, I'm defining a variable a, assigning it 20. Second um, term is going to be definition of variable b, where I'm going to assign a function that takes x and returns a. Finally, I'm going to call b, so the second, the variable declared in the second term, and, and I'm going to pass 1 to it. What is the output of this program? If you don't know, copy-paste. Actually, to confirm, copy-paste these three lines in a text file of racket and run it and see the, the output. So the output, let's try to understand what it is. If you look at b, b has a lambda. It ignores whatever parameter or argument was given to it and just returns a. a is 20. So when you call b and you pass 1, you should get 20. Right? So let's see if lambda f is able to uh, produce this answer. So how do we do that? What I'm going to what I'm going to ask you to do is go back to this slide, slide number 22, okay? And open in the browser window right next to this video. Try to do that, please. If you can print it even better. If you can print this out. Um, so now what, what I'm going to do is, this is going to be your input, right? So if you look at lambda, um, your down arrow, it has two parameters. One is the term, second one is the environment. Okay. And that's what I'm going to show you right here, environment and term. And then what we're going to try to do is first guess what is the output environment and output value. And secondly, we're going to try to figure out how to use the rules to understand the execution. That's the point of the rules is really to help you. So let's see. So now what I'm going to ask you is pause the video, look at the rules and try to understand, think with your head, what is going to be the output and how do, how do you look at these rules to understand what's going on? So please pause the video. Okay, I'm going to assume you've already did that. So in terms of output, define A is going to create a variable here, and A is going to be assigned to 20. So the environment, we're going to use the same syntax that we've learned in module 4. So the output is going to be an environment with the pair A to 20, and the value of define is of course void. And now, please look at your rules, and what you'll see is in order to evaluate this, the left-hand side is going to be define A20. If you evaluate um, the expression, right, you have to apply this rule, E def. To do that, you now have a 20. How do you evaluate a 20? 20 is the number. You have to use this rule, eval. The input environment is going to be empty. So this is here, the, the input environment. Uh, and the output is going to be the same number. So that's why we have 20 here. And now, what is the output? Well, it's going to be an environment where we add the pair A to the output of this, so A20. And the second thing we return is this void because the rule says so. Okay, I hope you were able to follow along. So now let's go to step two. Now our input environment is as follows. And what we want to evaluate is this term. Okay, now the term has a lambda, and as we know, evaluating a lambda has to follow the E closure rule. So try to figure out what is the output. The only interesting thing here is the output environment, because the value you already know. Okay, please pause the video, and then I'm going to continue. Okay, so A20 is the same, new thing is this pair. When we evaluate a lambda, it gets converted into a closure, right, where the lambda is here, and it captures the environment that was, that existed at creation time, therefore the environment in the input, which is this pair, which is right here. Output file is going to be void, that's what you have here. Okay, how do you look at the rules? 
the rules, again, we apply and you define on the bottom. And then on top, we have a single rule for the body of the expression, which is this lambda. For that, we have to use the rule E lamb, which gets you the lambda here, and the closure goes here. Okay, so hopefully nothing too surprising. We have to extend the output environment. So given the input environment, we have to extend it with a pair B assigned to whatever is given here and return void. Okay. Finally, we have this environment and we want to evaluate B1. How do we do that? Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, maybe pause the video, try to figure that out. Uh, first of all, recall that when you call a function, that's just an expression, and expressions do not produce side effects in the environment, so you should observe the same environment in the output. Uh, and the value is going to be, as we've seen, has to be 20. So this is what we would like. Okay, so is this what really happens? Let's look at the rules. Try to use the, the rules slide to figure this out. Okay, so what we have is going to be, this is the input, right? So it's going to be a term that has an expression. And then we have to apply the rule for evaluating an expression, which is going to be the only way to evaluate this expression is the rule E app. To evaluate E app, we have to evaluate B. B is a variable, so you have to use the, the rule E var, which looks up the environment. So what environment are we using? It's always the same input environment, which is E. E is given here, so it's this, this fellow right here, right, which I highlight in blue. Um, so this is um, in B. Here is the closure associated with B. That's what we're returning. So that's why it's here. Okay. And then if we evaluate the argument, there's only one, right? Always. So we evaluate one, that is one, we use the rule eval like before. And finally, what we do, we have to take E, uh, sorry, not E, we have to take the environment of the closure, and we have to extend it with Y assigned to one, because one is the argument. Uh, we call this F. So F is A, uh, where we take uh, B. Wait, this is this is incorrect. Actually, let me fix this slide. Okay, I fixed uh, scope the environment F. So environment F has to be the environment given in the closure that was stored in the closure, right? And we have to extend it. Um, parameter Y is assigned to one because one is given, right? One is here. Uh, so that's what's gonna that's the environment we're gonna use to evaluate A. Right. As we can see, y is not a, so it has to be 20. And therefore, we're returning, when we call f of a, that should return 20. Okay. Um, so now, let's look at another example. Example 2, what we do is something very simple. We just reorder these two instructions. So first, we define b, uh, and then we define a, and finally call b. Uh, so first of all, try to copy paste this into racket, run it and look at the output. Okay, see if it matches your expectation and then please resume the video. So as you can see, the output is the same. The output is 20. But now let's see if our semantics lambda f is still able to reproduce this behavior. Okay, so we're going to do the same. We're going to start with the first term that we want to evaluate, which is define b lambda y. When we evaluate it, look at your uh, rule sheet, see how you would evaluate what, uh, what, what is the output environment, what is the output value. So please pause the video and then resume it. Okay, so as you can see, the crucial point here that we want to make is that when you evaluate this lambda and you convert it into a closure, it's going to capture the input environment, which is empty. Okay, so keep this in mind. This is the only change. Right, it's just here in yellow. Value is going to be void, as you saw before. So if you look at the rules, the only thing you need to remember is that the environment you're going to store in the closure is going to be whatever is given in an input, which in this case is the empty environment. 
Second step, we have this environment with our closure with an empty environment. I want to evaluate A, assigned to 20. Pretty easy. So please pause the video to try to figure this one out. Okay, so what we get is A assigned to 20, same closure, uh, and the result is void. Nothing too crazy. Okay. So here, when we evaluate a number, we use the input environment, but nothing changes because it's a number. Okay, finally, we're going to evaluate the function call, and here is where things become interesting. Uh, try to pause the video and, and really try to answer this question. So does this work? Does this not work? And why? Okay, I'm going to assume you already paused the video. The output is going to be, again, output environments when you, you call a function should be the same. So this shouldn't change. And the value ideally is 20. But if you see, you will learn that it doesn't work. It's undefined, actually. So why is that? And the reason is because if you look at um, the rule of calling a function, uh, it's going to use the empty environment, right? And then we're going to assign y to 1, right? And then when we're evaluating a, the input environment does not have a, right? a is not here, and y is not a. So where is a? When we try to do this part of the evaluation that we did before, f now is a set that only has y assigned to 1. It does not have a, right? Because when you evaluate it upon creation, um, function b was empty. So therefore, this is empty. If this is empty, when you call f, there is no a. There is no a. Uh, lookup is undefined. So, which means that our function is unable our evaluation function, or lambda f, is unable to replicate the idea of record. And the important thing here to note is that um, to be able to represent this very simple program, what you see is that the a here, when when I define here, right, second line, when I define the, the, the a assigned to 20, somehow I have to mutate whatever environment this lambda was affecting, right? Which is not very trivial, because we have an immutable language. How do we encode this kind of immutability in this case, right? As we saw before, we were just copying the environment, but that is not enough. So we need to add, as we learn in computer science, any program can be fixed by a level of indirection. That's what we're going to learn. We're going to learn how to encode mutation so that we can update the environment where this closure is going to point to, so that we can update this A to 20. And um, when we call B, it will look up in this global environment and see it. Okay, but that's the subject for a future lesson. Thank you. I hope you had enjoyed this one.